What's going on, everybody? Uh, this video is sad news on the call for the first time in a long time. But you can see it's on jacks. It's hovering. It's got natural camo. Everything's peeling. It's coming to an end. But as maintenance-free as this has been, it's kind of catching up to me. Just driving along one day. I'm in Charlotte now. Charlotte kind of has bumpy roads. Nothing out of the ordinary, like, worse or better than Columbia or Clemson or anywhere. Yeah, they're bad, but everywhere around here is bad. Getting groceries, getting a haircut, pulled out of the grocery store, and I hear, like, these chains dragging, and I'm like, oh, it's just a car, because it came and went. I'm going down a road, I usually go down, like, I've been here six months, and it's not a, out of the, it's like a normal road for me to go down. And then I hit another bump, or like a little dip, and, um, hear something knock around, and then I look in my rear view, and this rubber bushing thing is, like, rolling with the car, you know, slowing down. And I'm like, oh no. You know, every time I hit a bump, I would hear like a little rattle. And I'm like, well, check, must be my exhaust or something. It could be one of those little hanging bushing things, because I thought it was bigger than it was. But keep going, and then hit another dipper pothole or something. <laughs> I start hearing a lot of rattling. And I'm like, okay, something's wrong. So I limp it home, try to be careful, but you can't really avoid bumps here. And lo and behold, I was like, well, maybe it's my taillight I installed because when I took out the original taillight, one nut was loose and maybe somehow all the nuts came loose and the taillight's rattling around. Both taillights completely fine. Super solid. And I'm like, okay, well, eliminate that. Let's go to uh, the exhaust. So reach down, wiggle the exhaust, firm as can be. And I'm like, well, it can only be one other thing back here that I know of. And that's the suspension. Open up the trunk. Lots of parts everywhere. So, as you can see, no suspension. And I took everything out. But, look over here, there is suspension. That's what it should look like. So, found this piece, threaded insert. Didn't really notice it at first or think of anything. It was right there. This little adjuster was also just somewhere around there. And I grab it and I'm like, all right, well, the nut just came undone. Let me put it back on. Wouldn't go back on. So that's where the threads come in. So, I already undid a lot. That's what it looks like, and this is what it should look like. So I was trying to screw on threads that weren't supposed to be off. Kind of found that a little late. So as you can see, I ordered new parts. Took everything apart, because it's been about a week or two weeks. Had to wait a whole week for parts. And decided to take off the other side and see what's different. What I think happened was this washer failed, and that's the chain noise I heard. And then it wore down this bushing, started compressing that a lot, and it shot out of here. And then, since it's in the trunk, it started wearing on the metal, metal on metal, wore down enough to where it put enough pressure or made a big enough divot to where it just snapped off. And sheared that off. So then my next challenge of finding those parts, because emailed BC Racing and I said, yeah, it looks like you need a whole new strut. Or sorry, they call it a damper, it's basically the strut. And I have beef with that, but you would need a whole new damper, so okay, and OEM hardware. So look up OEM hardware. I can only find the top cap with the bushing. This is all I can find. I don't want to reuse it because I think, well, I know because I tried putting it back on and it didn't fit, but I think when it's sheared off, it like pulled the threads. And if I try to put it on a new one, it'll just cross thread it because it's not right. A new one of those is about $30, great. Let's find the bottom bushing. You can only get the bottom bushing and washer if you buy a whole new damper. Usually when you buy a whole new damper, or not damper, shock or strut, whatever you want to call it. And usually you replace the hardware when you get it in new ones. And these reuse it, which I think is big flaw. But I couldn't really get the bushings except for one place, and that's Steeda or KYB. Same picture, so I think it's the same thing. So I order it, and it's, you know, washer, lower bushing, upper bushing, upper washer hat thing, and a nut. And the nut doesn't fit stock suspension. It's made for one. It's made for a specific brand or something, I don't know. But nut's too big, so I have to find a new nut. So I picked up a nylon locking nut because that's what came in the kit. Figured if it's already a nylon nut, it should be good. I don't really know, like this one's kind of gold or bronze tinted. Um, I don't think it's brass, but 
Other one was silver. I don't really know codes for nuts. I mean, there's bolts. They have little markings for like five, six, eight, whatever. I don't really know nuts, so hopefully this is right. If not, correct me. And I also picked up a washer just in case, which turns out I needed it. So you could order both kits. So that kit is $15. So if you order both, you're, you're looking at uh, 40 bucks for one side, so 80 bucks total. The hardware was seven bucks, so all in I'm at like 47, so half price. That was fun. Uh, I got to disassemble it, that was fun. Things you need to do this. Impact gun. I don't think a breaker bar will work. You, you need some impact thing. Uh, you need your spanner wrenches, which hopefully you have from BC kit that came with it. If not, you can order new ones of those. Impact specific socket. I couldn't get my chrome socket to work. I had to buy an impact socket. That's about it. We'll see what installing is like. But to undo the damper from the base, right, you have your base, I'm going to call it, cup, whatever. And you have this. You have to loosen this up. Uh, so it's regular lefty loosey righty tighty. Uh, you'll have to do this while it's installed in the car. Go ahead and loosen it before you take it out. It's installed, and you'll definitely need to whack this with a hammer. And I totally didn't use a regular hammer. Definitely used a rubber mallet. So marked, uh, it's kind of crooked, but we're going to go with the middle line right there. Marked it with tape so we know the height. So now all we have to do is put it back together. And I bought two uh, bushing kits. Just so I can just so I can replace them both because if one failed I'm sure the other one is not far behind the strut doesn't seem blown still seems good so it's not like it was a blown strut that causes I don't I don't really it could just be the bump I hit at whatever speed and every factor was right for it to fail so like if I push on it it takes pretty much the same force I feel like as the new one so it is what it is I don't I don't really know this is like super weird all the parts that came off put them back on in the order. Once you break this, this will be uh, super loose. And I don't know why, but I found this label has to be facing out. That's the easiest way for me to get it in. It could just be in my head, but maybe it goes in one way. The angled one, the angled bushing, goes on the bottom, and we'll put that in first. I don't know if there's a right or wrong way. Some people say one's easier than the other. And just to hold it in place, we'll put the bolt in, in the back, just to hold it up. All right, so it's a five mil on the inside, and I have a T-handle. I'm gonna push it up against this, I don't know the word, sheet metal sure I think it's a 17 nut which your nut might vary I think the stock one is 15 but again I didn't take it off so I have no clue and you're asking yourself wouldn't this be easier if you just got a 17 wrench yeah but it's almost nine o'clock and uh, nowhere's open this is gonna take forever I'll be back all right, this is where I'm going to stop for tonight. I need to borrow more tools. Done all I can do. Make sure you put some type of lube, not WD-40 or brake cleaner, but some oil-based lube, like, or it could be silicone. I think that'd be fine. On your bushing, so when it slides in, it doesn't really catch on anything. Don't have to be a whole lot, just a little bit. You can dab it on your finger and rub it around. All right, it's a new day. I had to get started already because charge batteries, you know. But I went to Lowe's, got some adapters. I've been forgetting tools, so it's been a couple days, but we're back at it. As you remember, we put this all in place, and I realized I should probably measure it to make sure it's even with the other side, even though I kind of did measure it. And what I did was, since I don't have a measuring tape to measure the distance, all I did was go to the other side and start at the rubber collar and go down to the locking nut is what I'm going to call it. There's a different name, I don't know it. But, made my own measuring tape, and I said, all right, how far is 
two popsicle sticks. And that's what we got. So I'm going to call that close enough. Maybe it'll settle a little bit. I don't know. Probably not because it's not a spring and springs are the only thing that settled. But we'll tighten this up and then we'll tighten up the bottom bolt. All right. And I, I've read 80 and 85. So we'll do 82 and a half foot bounds. And this top nut is 30 foot pounds, but you can't use an, uh, a torque wrench on it. So what I like to do is take my torque wrench to that bottom bolt and set it for 30, get a feel of what 30 feels like, and then do it by hand. But it's not as tight as you think it would be. And we'll two. It's also lower. That much room compared to that much room. It looks similar. Also, check out the sky right now. It's a lot more yellow, but uh, we'll start it up because I haven't started it in like, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, however long it's been. Go get some gas and test out what I did. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Did not sound very happy. Isn't too promising, but it's not a whole lot of noise under the engine, so I don't think it's quite rod knock yet. But those pops at the beginning are a little. Mm. Bang. Let it idle for a little bit. It did do that weird startup at Pro Auto when I picked it up, right when they told me it was like dying. So I think if I just let it sit, it doesn't like it but it goes back to maybe there's somehow oil getting in and it just gets finicky or something. But if you know what those pops are, let me know. Because even at idle, it'll pop too. Yes. It smells not right. Bodie, kind of. So it's either fuel and oil or just oil or I don't know. But not good news. I'm still looking for a truck, which I should just suck it up and buy one. Well, that's the story for another day. It was like a da, 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 da. it was like a beat. It was like a rhythm, like a real choppy uh, muscle car from the '60s or '70s. Like I, it's not cam, but it sounded kind of cam, and that's not good. Uh, I also just discovered, you know, it's it's that high, right? Why is this one so much higher? Yeah, that's the situation. I think I know how to fix it. I think I just need to add a washer on the bottom, which means I have to take the whole thing out again. Can't win with this car. So I just undid everything that I did and figured out why it was sticking up so much higher than the other side. So, got it all back together. So it has that gold washer underneath the big washer because the big washer is too big. Remember the nuts too big. Apparently this is all designed for some other thing that's not OEM, so it does not fit SN97 and the S197 Mustang. Who knows what it fits? It's kind of crap. Uh, I had to put a little washer there because there's a collar or like a shelf right there that the original washer sits on that keeps it all together. So this silver washer was going all the way down and compressing it like that. Definitely was a lot harder to turn the nut on the inside. So. That all makes sense. But now we just put a tire on, lower it, and hopefully it'll run. Moment of truth. Yep, that looks right. Compare it to that. And that looks good enough. So if you have a Mustang S197 and you have BC coilovers, I don't know what to tell you about the bushing. I still haven't found a better solution other than this, and you just use washers. Like, it seems really poorly executed. The only way you can get that bottom bushing and washer is you buy new struts, which obviously you don't want to do. You want to run the coilovers. It's kind of dumb on BC Racing that they don't even make the bushing. Like, is it that hard to make the bushing and washer? But for reference, three fingers to the top line. And over here. 
All right, maybe three, three and a half, four fingers to the line. So this, this side is a little bit higher. Again, I don't know if I need to let it settle like new suspension because I thought that was just with springs, but yeah, that's that. We fixed it. Thanks for watching the video, but I'm probably not going to drive this car as much. I'm just going to impulse buy a truck because I need it. I might just buy a Danger Ranger or something cheap, but we need to fix this and raise it. I debated buying a two valve, selling this, buying a two valve to race because it's cheaper. Talked to some guys that run two valves and have had the newer ones. And they say they use the parts just as much as this. So like if I use a quarter of a tank for a session or a day or whatever, the two valve is also going to use a quarter of a tank. So, you know, that checks it off. How often does it go through brake pads, brake rotors? It's the same amount. So it's like all the wear parts I'd replace in the same intervals. Are the parts cheaper? You could argue that. Engines are more readily available, but this has like twice the power. So make it light as possible and uh, see what happens. But uh, with that, take care. I'll see you on the next one.